So, you know, one thing I can say with confidence as a man who's been doing this coaching thing for over 15 years is that women really don't understand men, okay? And, you know, I think a, a better thing to say is women struggle with accepting certain realities about men, all right? Because so much of what I'm going to talk about today and has been conveyed to women, women have heard it over and over again, but it's not either resonating or there's still resistance to that reality. And the reason why I'm having this discussion right now is because I really need you to embrace these things for what they are. Because in the, in the rejection or the resistance to these truths, women set themselves up for a lot of unhealthy or just bad situations overall. And I'm trying to stop that. I'm trying to break the negative cycle, help you break the negative cycle of ending up in situations you don't belong in or that rob you of your joy, your peace, your sanity in some cases, all right? And your time, your energy, your spirit, you name it. I want that to be done with. So as we talk about these things, take a deep breath and hear the explanation for each one, right? And embrace the importance of knowing these things and how it's going to help you experience better in your life. So the, one of the big Truths about men that women learn too late or accept too late, if at all for some individuals, is the reality that you can't make him be ambitious. All right? Now, I know that hits some of y'all in the gut. I know some of y'all already feeling it because either you have gone through it or you have witnessed others going through it. This idea that I can make this man better, I can push him to the top, I can get him to become more or tap into the potential I see in him, only to have that woman end up feeling drained, frustrated, or in some cases, succeed in pushing the man only for him to then go to somebody else. Now, we're not going to talk about the going to somebody else part. Let's focus on the making him ambitious part. So I hear a lot of women sometimes when, when they're asked a question like, would you get with a guy who's not financially stable or still needs to get his stuff together? Now, some of y'all are going to say, hell no, I won't. <laughs> right? Like You're not even entertaining that. And then others will be like, oh, yes, I would get with him because I can help him. I can work with him. I I'm going to make him better. Like I remember one woman saying, you know, whatever he has, I'm going to multiply it. You, you can't multiply someone who is not capable of being multiplied, all right? Five times zero equals zero. And I'm not saying this in a disrespectful way or, or, or in a way to speak down on, because this is not all men, but some men. The reality is that their ambitious level is level zero, okay? They have no desire for more, they only maybe have a desire for what is enough to get by. So there's a lot of guys out there where as long as they have a roof over their head, whether it's a roof they pay for or you pay for, okay, food on their table and a woman in their bed, they're good. They're good. They don't care for more. And so you thinking you're going to come into their life and you're going to help them do more. So to use an example, let's say he's a plumber. I'm just using that as an example. And in your mind, you might, or in that woman's mind, she may think, you know what? I, he, he's a, a good enough man that he should own his own plumbing company. I'm going to help him own his own plumbing company. But he don't care for that. He don't want that. He does not have that desire in him. And so now, in you trying to pour that ambition into him, right, it can create dynamics where he becomes frustrated and resentful because you're like trying to drag him to a place he doesn't want to be. You become resentful and, and angry or whatever, frustrated, because he is not going along with the vision that you have. And you got to understand, if he doesn't have his own vision, we got a problem right there. Or again... You'll have a situation where 
This idea that you can make him better is blinding you from the disconnect that already exists between the two of you, which then can turn into these situations many times where once that man actually does get to a better level, he leaves. Okay? Now, let me tell you this. It's not just the man gets to the better level and he leaves. It happens the other way around, whether you realize it or not. I, I remember one time I spoke on a panel. This is several, several years ago. And the man was explaining to me, he was divorced, and he said when he got married, he didn't really have much going on for himself. He was still trying to get himself together. But his wife or his girlfriend at the time, she was doing very well for herself. She's like, don't worry about it. I got you. So when they got together for years, she was holding it down. She was the main one paying the bills, all that stuff. But in this case, he actually had greater ambition in him. And he actually applied himself got his stuff together, and became very successful. Now, once he became successful, in his mind, and this is what he's explaining to me, he's like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to basically pay her back, essentially, for all that she's done for me. I'm, I want to make sure I'm the one taking care of the bills now, and she don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And he said, when he started to now try to step into that role, she didn't like it. She felt some kind of way about it. It started to disrupt, and, and I'm sure there was other issues in this marriage, not just this, but this was a clear issue that caused the problem. Now, we won't get too deep into why that would happen, but I'm going to say this. Some women, not saying it's you, but some women will allow, a man, allow herself to be with a man who has less or doesn't have much going on for himself because she feels a sense of v greater value and leverage there. And it may not be this malicious thing, this intentional thing, but subconsciously, it makes her feel safer there. And when she no longer has that perceived greater value, that perceived leverage, it makes her feel insecure. It makes her feel inadequate. She starts to feel uncomfortable, and that can create all kinds of problems. But that's a whole nother video in itself. Back to the main point. You got to understand, it's, you, can only, you, you can only multiply what can be multiplied. And so you have to discover if that man has that ambition for himself. So there's a difference between you meet a man who is ambitious, is a hard worker, but he hasn't gotten to that place yet. And you feel like, okay, together we can really make things pop off and do some amazing things. That's much more understandable because he has the foundation in place and that's what you're multiplying. But again, I'm going to say it one more time, five times zero equals zero. Unless, unless my math is wrong. I'm not, I'm not wrong. Five times zero equals zero. So you, you can't do nothing with someone who does not have nothing to give you. All right? And that's a reality that you have to accept about men. All right. So let's keep this going. Another harsh truth about men that women learn too late or accept too late is that men have feelings too. Now, I know some of y'all might be shocked <laughs> at that, right? And some of y'all be like, of course, what, of course we know that. No, not all of you know that, unfortunately. There's a lot of women who genuinely feel that men just don't have feelings, all right? And men typically, in general, just don't care. And I completely understand where that comes from and why that happens. The unfortunate reality is that some women have become so conditioned to dealing with unhealthy men, toxic men, men who were not serious about them, and therefore did not display a deeper care for them or a care in general, that they now perceive that or project that onto men everywhere and think this is just how men are. Men are damn near heartless, okay? But I need you to understand that is very unhealthy to believe, and it's completely wrong, okay? One, as I mentioned, you got to know the difference between men who you dealt with who just were not serious about you and just there for fun, right? So therefore, they're not going to show you feelings, care, all these things, versus the, the guy who has genuine interest. Because if you think men don't have feelings, 
You will behave in ways that are very dismissive of a man's feelings. You will behave in ways that are very insensitive to a man's feelings. And therefore, you will cause damage with a man who may be trying to actually love you. All right? So you can't get caught up and, 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 and let, your, let your, 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 your perception be tainted by negative experiences. You got to separate that. The reality is that men in general, aside from how serious they are about you and that contributing to how they show up in that relationship emotionally, I think we, we can, most of us, if not all of us can agree that in general, a lot of men, not all, a lot of men struggle with opening up. So sometimes what seems as this cold wall or this heartless person is a man who does not know how to let his wall down and show how he truly feels. Now, is that the problem of the woman? No. And if you watch my previous videos, I'm not here to tell you to deal with a man who has not worked on himself from an emotional place. He has to learn how to open up more. He has to learn how to communicate with you, how to be more expressive, all these things. And if you want to work with him, work with him as a friend, not get involved thinking that you're going to pull it out afterwards. No, he has to show the willingness or ability to, to express it and let it out before you guys can get too involved with each other. Or you're going to set yourself up for a very unhealthy situation. But never confuse any of these things with the idea that men just don't have feelings. And let me also say this, it's, it's not just men have feelings. I, I think as women, you underestimate, many of you underestimate how much men are getting hurt out here, how much men are getting played out here. We hear about the negative stories more so from women because when a woman has been hurt, played, used, whatever, right, there is a greater likelihood that she's willing to speak about it. She's willing to tell her friends, family, in today's world, jump on the internet, right? And tell the whole world. Whereas men will suffer in silence. And, and one of the reasons why is it, it may not even be they're unwilling to open up about it, but unfortunately, society, so, a lot of people tend, tend to have this attitude of, if the man says, yeah, like I lost my woman, the question to him is, well, what did you do wrong? And if the woman says, this man left me or we're broken up, oh, you know, it's all on him. Like, like there's this thing where there's, a, there's this natural inclination by many to, to automatically protect the woman and automatically hold the man accountable in the situation, even when it wasn't his fault. And so that tends to create men who shy away from speaking on it, okay? But that doesn't mean... They don't have feelings. That doesn't mean they don't care. That doesn't mean there aren't men right now as we speak hurting deeply. All right? Now, to wrap up this point, I'm going to say this. Whether you're a woman or a man watching this video right now, and we all have feelings, right? If you've gone through hurt, you've gone through trauma, go through the process of healing. Get that assistance you need. Don't just agree with this video or be like, okay, yeah, you know, I hear it. No, it, it, w look at yourself in the mirror and say, okay, am I that person as well? Am I that person who is hurting or who now comes off cold because I put all these walls up to protect me, but in reality, deep inside, I just want to give and receive love. Deep inside, I just want positive relationships, whether that be romantic, family, whatever, right? And, and for most people, that's, that is you. So be willing to do what you got to do to set yourself up for better because, you know, the, the old saying, hurt people hurt people. And, and sometimes you don't realize how carrying that hurt leads you into hurting others. And if, even if you say to me, Steph, I don't, I've never hurt anyone and I've been hurt. But yeah, but you're probably hurting yourself. So even if you can say you're not hurting anyone else, I, I'm almost certain, if not completely certain, you are still hurting yourself in the process. So please get the help you need. All right, so here's another harsh truth about men that women learn too late. And that is, he can sleep with you, but still not want to be with you. Now, again, let me just say for some of y'all, y'all might be saying this is common sense. Uh, common sense ain't always so common. 
And you got to understand and respect, not everyone has received this information or received it in a way that it can resonate with them and they can truly understand it for what it is, okay? With that said, there's a lot of women who still confuse or try to overanalyze situations where a man is willing to be intimate with them and, and to a certain extent spend some time with them, but is unwilling to take that next step and haven't learned how to separate the two when it comes to men, all right? Not saying when it comes to women. You, you are who you are, okay? And if you are a woman that says, well, listen, I would never sleep with someone that I did not have a desire to truly be with or a willingness to be with, okay, cool. But you cannot project that or expect that from others, especially from men. Now, that isn't to say, I always have to remind y'all, that isn't to say there aren't plenty of men who operate that same way, because there are, believe it or not. However, there are tons of men, all right, and, and I would argue more men than women who will sleep with a woman despite having no desire of being with her. And the bottom line is, for these men, the intimacy is just physical pleasure. It is just the opportunity to experience that woman, and, and it doesn't carry the weight of what a relationship or a committed relationship carries. So what I mean by that is this. I'm going to go a step further in telling y'all, y'all might find this disgusting, but it's just the truth. There are tons of men out there who can sleep with a woman they're not even attracted to, okay? And some will say, well, how, how is that? How can you sleep with someone you're not attracted to? Well, understand, wh whether it be he's not attracted or he doesn't see a future with this woman. For that man, sleeping with that woman is a one night thing or it's, it's, a, it's a momentary thing. All right. So he just has to show up for that experience. And of course, maybe some calls that preceded it and things of that nature. But truly, it's for that experience. And then that's it. He, he doesn't have to. See this woman again, you have to continue to deal with her. He can move on. Being in a relationship with her is meaning he has to continuously, consistently show up. So that's why even though he may not be attracted to her, she can still fulfill his desire for that moment. He can still tolerate the situation. I hate to use the word tolerate, but it is what it is. Tolerate that situation in that moment, but he cannot keep it up ongoing. And that's why it, it's two separate things for a lot of these men. And that's also why it's so important for you as a woman to understand you have to stand in your principles, but you got to understand everyone doesn't have your principles. Everyone doesn't have your same outlook, all right? And don't let that confuse you or get you caught up in a situation because what happens is if a woman doesn't accept the reality that a man can sleep with her but not want to be with her, she allows the sleeping together to confuse her or to lure her into the thinking of there's a chance here. Lure her into thinking, okay, well, he, he must like me. He's sleeping with me. So maybe if I just stick around long enough, or I've even had some women say to me, maybe if I just put it on him even better in the bedroom, he'll want to take that next step. No. No. That's, that's not what's going to make him want to take the next step. Now, let me say this. <laughs> Is it possible to reel a man in because you do some things really good in the bedroom? I'm not going to lie to you. It's possible. But that's not the relationship you want. You do not want the relationship predicated on you were able to reel him in because you did some little tricks in the bed. Like, that's not the foundation necessary. So is it possible? Yes. Has it happened? Absolutely. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. There are men who have found themselves staying with a woman because it was just that good. But then you have to ask yourself, how, what does the quality of that relationship even look like? And, and, and what does it look like, not just today, two weeks from now, a few months, years from now? And I can tell you, if that's the foundation, it's not looking good. It's not going to hold up well. So you don't want to fall into that thinking of that you're going to use that avenue to get what you desire. No, there has to be something deeper there. There has to be, or there needs to be connection there, all right? There needs to be 
God's... When I say God, because I know some of y'all are like, wait a minute, we talking about Satan, now you're going to bring about God. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> what I mean is when it comes to moving forward for man in dating him and being in a relationship with him, you know me, I'm, I'm about consulting God and making sure this is even a person you should be entertaining, all right? We're not talking about the sex part, just in general, entertaining. And so ultimately, yeah, this is just one of those things that you, you, you got to stop questioning and and refusing to accept for what it is because the quicker you just, you know, you, you accept it, the, the better you're gonna, better off you're going to be moving forward. All right. So we got a couple more to go. But before we get to it, I want you to take this opportunity to join my special club that sends you inspirational messages and personalized, well, and videos with, you know, giving you some encouragement, pouring peace, love, positivity into your life. Go to messagesfromstefan.com. Uh, click the link in the description or the comment section. Join today. It's only $5 a month. And a part of the proceeds will go to my Healing Generations Foundation nonprofit organization. We have amazing big things planned that I'm trying to do to impact this world. And I would love and appreciate your support. So again, you can go to messagesfromstefan.com or click the links in the uh, comment section below. Now, to keep this thing going, another harsh truth about men that women learn too late is that, and I guess it's not a harsh truth, but it's just a real truth, that men are very weak to a woman's feminine energy. Now, some of y'all may have rolled your eyes, <laughs> okay, and like, whatever, and that's not true. And, and some of y'all smile because you're like, yep, it sure is true. Because you used it and you see how it works for you. I've had tons of people, tons of women who came up to me at events or emailed me. It was like, I've tried this feminine energy thing and it's working like crazy. So it's real. But to get to the point, men are weak to feminine energy. So let me give this disclaimer. Does it mean you can get any man you want by simply giving off feminine energy? No. Absolutely not. The same way a man, he can give off masculine energy doesn't mean he's going to get any woman he wants. Because there's so many other factors at play as far as what creates desirability between two people and a willingness to pursue that, things of that nature. However, in general, for the most part, okay, men are drawn to feminine energy. Now, let me paint this picture or give this example. Have you ever seen a woman or known a woman who she, she uses terms of endearment with everyone? Everyone is baby, honey, sweetie, whatever, right? If you think about this woman, has she, have you ever noticed her having a hard time to get a man to do her a favor? No. That woman could have some man taking out her garbage, <laughs> painting her house, taking her car to a mechanic, whatever she wants. Why? Because she knows how to talk to them in a way that makes them weak to her, her, her requests, okay? That feminine energy, that, that positive, loving energy makes a lot of men be more willing to do for you. And, and, and one thing I say about being in your feminine is you have to learn how to receive, Okay, there's an important quote I want you to always remember. I was speaking to a client the other day and she talked about how her father always taught her to never rely on a man and how she needs to be independent and do her own thing. And I'm sure a lot of you have had that same experience, whether it was your father or your mother or somebody. And I told her, I said, listen, it's true in the sense that I don't want you guys to have to rely on a man, but I want you to be able to receive from a man. All right. And there's a difference. It's not don't do for yourself. Don't don't learn how to stand on your own two feet. But it is don't get so consumed by your independence that when a man or even people in general want to do for you, you don't know how to receive it. You're always I'm good. I'm fine. I got this. And then what happens is you create this environment where not just with men, with people in general, it could be family and friends where you become the strong one that people don't really check up on. You become the strong one that people always assume you okay, you got it, because you're conditioning them to that belief. 
rather than letting them pour into you when they offer to pour into you, rather than letting them see that, yeah, you could use some help right now, that, yeah, you would appreciate a little bit of assistance right now. You've got to learn how to not keep that wall up that is blocking you from receiving, and whether you realize it or not, giving love as well. But to get back to the point of the feminine energy, it, it just has a very strong power on men. Now, here's something that you may not realize as a woman, because a lot of women will say to me, when we talk about the dynamics of relationships and men and women, they'll say, there's so many great women out there. I don't understand what these men are doing. And I'm like, you know, I don't think y'all realize there might be a lot of good women. And when I say good women, I mean at their core who they are, they're a good person, good woman. But that doesn't mean there's a lot of positive women. It doesn't mean there's a lot of women exuding that feminine energy. And I bring that point to say, when you start to walk in it, you separate yourself from the pack. You start to stand out more because you don't realize this isn't as common as you may think. All right? And, and, and understand it, if you're saying to yourself, because I don't know why this is coming in my head, but if some of you are thinking, well, when I'm, I've seen tons of women who act feminine. Understand, there's a, there's a, some women can, can exude feminine energy in certain environments, but when a man comes around, it's a wrap. <laughs> so like I always say on tour, some women will say, I'm not feminine, right? But then you put them around kids and they're sweet, they're loving, they're feminine, they're all these things. And then a man comes around, shut the whole thing down. It's over, all right? Feminine energy gone. And the reality is that when in environments that they don't view these people, kids, maybe friends, whoever, as a threat to their emotions, their feelings, right? They're open, they're vulnerable, they're feminine, they're loving, they're sweet. But men, they view as danger. They view as potential trouble. The wall goes up. And not just the wall goes up, the wall goes up, snipers on the roof, landmines around the perimeter, like y'all ain't playing no games. You're not letting anyone through. And you don't realize that completely blocks that energy from coming out of you or that spirit from coming out of you. So to wrap this point up, the point, the bottom line is men are drawn to it, men are weak to it. And if you learn how to tap into it and use it, you're going to get a lot more out of them than you realize. All right, so here's another harsh truth about men that women learn too late. And, and I'm, I'm just gonna let y'all know, this one is just something that I felt like I had to mention, okay? And that is the fact that the loneliest person, and please don't throw your shoe at the screen and, and, and don't roll your eyes, just hear me out. The loneliest person on earth is a single man. Now, some of y'all will dispute that and say, that's not true. There's tons of lonely women, or you may interject yourself into that. And, and I know some of you may have heard me mention that in a video from a while back when I had an interview with a uh, friend, Coriel. But I, I felt like I needed to bring that back up because this is not about a competition of who's lonelier and who has it harder, right? <clears throat> but it is about painting the reality or showing the reality that these same men that some of you may feel like don't have feelings or don't want relationships or all these different things are struggling more than you realize. And that for the average man, finding companionship is very difficult. All right. Now, I, you could argue that for the average woman right now, finding serious or marriage-minded companionship is just as hard as difficult, right? Granted. And, and I think there's different things that both sides truly may be valuing or aiming for as far as what a prior, the priority is. However, the bottom line is both are struggling, but yes, for men, it's harder, okay? And the reason why I want you to understand that is one, something that I've noticed in counseling and coaching so many people is that a lot of men sometimes, whether they are good for you or not, whether they are showing up the way they need to or not, struggle or fight letting go of that woman because what you don't realize is 
they don't really have anyone else. All right. Now, I don't say that for you to give them sympathy and be like, oh, okay, I'm going to let this man linger on and stay in my life because he ain't got no... That's not what I'm saying it for. I'm only explaining why some of them will not walk away, even despite it being dysfunctional or toxic. All right. And, and, and that's what's continuing to motivate them. And, and I think it's important for you to know that because sometimes some of you will confuse their unwillingness to let go with, maybe he really does love me. No, he's afraid to be by himself. And he doesn't have anyone else that he can lean on. And depending on the dynamic that you've been having with this man, you are his lifeline, essentially. All right. I've seen some situations where some of these men have exhausted their other options, meaning like people that help them out, whether it be friends or family. They're, I'm speaking specifically about the guys who ain't handling their business and taking care of their life. And now you're the woman that took them in and is basically providing a roof and food for them. And so, yeah, they, they're not trying to leave that situation. Right. But to go deeper or to go further into this point of men being the loneliest. I think the other reason why I want you to know this is because the reality is that so many men do want relationship. Not just for the, I ain't got nobody else, I'm lonely, but just they desire that companion. They don't have that, okay? And even if we say, even if anyone wants to make the argument that, oh, well, no, a man doesn't have it as hard as women when it comes to romantic relationships. Well, consider the fact that women tend to have, on average, more of a support group around them. Family, friends, so on and so forth. A lot of men don't, all right? And a lot of men are craving that partnership with a woman. And so no matter how bad it may look in this world, trust and believe. I, I, I will say the majority of men want relationship, all right? I know the internet makes it seem different. I know you hear a lot of miserable voices on the internet talking very negatively. And I always say the miserable ones are the loudest ones, okay? But do not let that blind you from the reality that they are craving love, attention, companionship, very much so. Just as much as you may be, okay? Or if it's not as much, they're still craving it a lot. And so it's just something that, I, I, again, I just felt like I, had, I wanted to or I needed to speak on it and bring it up um, and just something for you to consider as a woman. But ultimately, you, you again, these aren't things you can control. These are just things for you to understand. And as I mentioned earlier, by you understanding it, it will empower you to, to navigate through it much better. Okay? And recognize that though there are some overarching truths to men in general, don't neglect the need to learn that man specifically, okay? Because some of these things will apply, some of these things won't apply. Like I said earlier, there are some men who literally can sleep with you and not have any feelings, not have any attraction. There are other men who know they have to have genuine attraction or they have to have a genuine desire of wanting to be with you. And you don't want to just assume he's this man, that man, whatever, talk. I think one of the things that are missing from our relationships is healthier, better communication and giving ourselves an opportunity to learn the individual in front of us. While still, yes, you, you can use these foundational points as something to kind of work from, but be open enough to understand there can be differences with this individual. And then from there, being able to recognize who you are truly in alignment with, who is truly the right person for you and who you can move forward and have an amazing relationship with. Thank you for watching this video. I pray it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on the price every woman pays for committing to the wrong man. You get with this man who isn't truly for you, isn't best for you, doesn't truly make you happy. And what's inevitable now is more issues will arise.